Hey everybody and welcome back for the fifth part of this series titled Design and Build a Chat App with Socket.io. In this one we're going to go ahead and get into our JavaScript to really add the functionality behind the scenes of sending messages and handling uh, button click events and things like that. So we're going to go ahead and dive right in and I've got, um, I've got VS Code here open. Uh, we've got the index.html and the app CSS, which is what we've been working with so far. And then we've got uh, our app JS, which is what we're going to kind of move to now. And if I come to the browser and look at my console, we'll see that it's connected because, well, let's refresh it here. And actually, let's, let's not preserve the log. Let's clear it out and let's refresh. Uh, hello from JS. So now we know that the JavaScript file is working which is what we want. And I think uh, one thing I didn't mention here, and this is actually the most important part of this video, is we are going to dynamically generate these HTML, uh, the HTML markup that represents each of these messages as they come in. So this is something if um, you'll kind of see it, and I'll, I'll come back to this point later, but dynam dynamically generating HTML is something that you'll see a lot, uh, the concept with like React components with JSX. So this is actually probably going to be a really useful skill for you guys if you kind of really understand what's going on in terms of how to generate HTML and put it in the DOM with, um, with JavaScript. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. And the first thing we want to do, I'll go ahead and get rid of this message since we know it works. And the first thing we want to do is I want to give us a way to differentiate between different types of messages. And really what I want to have, we're going to just uh, give each message object a property called left, right, or login. This will be the, the message type that it is. So these are just going to be strings and and what's going to what this is going to look like is we're going to have a, a const here called messages and it's going to be an array and each inside of here each item is going to have an author, a date, content, and then a type. So this is the object that's going to represent each of the messages that comes in and this would be messages instead of message. So we'll have the author, who wrote it, the date, when it was written, the content, uh, what the actual message is, and then the type, which is going to be uh, either left, right, or uh, login, because we, we do a little bit different styling based on uh, the type. So what I'll, I'm going to do is come in and I'm going to create a, an object called message types. And basically this is going to be, if you're used to like an enumeration or something like that, uh, this is basically going to be what that is. So I'm going to have a keyword here with a capital left and it's just going to represent the string left. Same thing for right. And this is something I do a lot um, for good programming practices. Anytime you're like hard coding strings, it's nice to tie them to variables like that so that I could come in and I could set uh, the type of one of these messages to message types dot left and I get this autocomplete in VS Code and it helps pre prevent me from doing typos or if we had hard coded this string in many places same concept of using a variable if I wanted to replace it I would have to go through and do a find and replace through the entire project in this case this file but with this set up here I could just change the value here and still use the left uh, the left uh, key of the inside of this message types object, which basically is an enumeration. So again, this is just for a little bit of safety, a little bit of um, you know knowing or helping myself not uh, mess up when I type these strings out hard coded. So then I'm gonna get into, uh, let's say chat stuff and then uh, login stuff. And really what we wanna do is, is get a reference to many of these items. And so I'll do chat window. It's gonna be, let's see, document get element by ID. All right, and then for the rest of these, I'm gonna use a, a snippet that I created called get ID here. And it's going to basically type out everything that I need. It's gonna autocomplete everything. So then I just have to type in uh, the rest of it. So uh, get ID is the snippet and I'll call this message input and that all to complete it. All right, and then const send button, or actually no, sorry, I wanna use my snippet. Get ID uh, send button. And notice that as I type the variable name here, this part also gets uh, completed as well. So that's part of the, the feature snippet. If you guys are curious, you can come down to settings, user snippets, type in JavaScript, and these are all the ones that I have so far. And I, I created this snippet here for get element by ID with that prefix get ID. And then it does this little piece of code. So this is probably what you're used to, uh, it, with the exception of a couple of these characters. 
So a const, a variable name, and think of this as uh, an actual variable that we're going to type in our message. And notice that one and one here are the same. This is why we get, when we type it in once, it auto-completes in both, in both places. And then uh, basically this dollar zero says that's going to be where our, our, our line or our character should end after we get done typing, which will be the new line. So let me do the same thing down here. Uh, user, user name, input, hopefully I type all these right. Get ID, and I'll, I'll fast forward through this. All right, so we've got, uh, got all of those references, and the last thing that I need is uh, a username variable for the user after they log in. So here we've got uh, our message types, enumeration, or object, just to give us these uh, left, right, and login values. We've got some chat stuff. These are the things that correspond to the, the chat section. Uh, then we've got some login stuff, which is stuff that corresponds to the login section, as you would probably expect. So the next thing we want to do, and this is this is one of the things that I think is, is actually the coolest. I'm going to create a function called create message HTML. I'll go ahead and capitalize that. And this is going to take in a message and um, then generate an HTML string. So let's uh, let's do a comment here. Uh, take in message object and gener and return corresponding uh, message HTML. And if you guys are a little thrown off here by the syntax, this is ES6, ES6 uh, fat arrow or arrow function syntax. Uh, so what this is is you're saying uh, create message HTML is a function, and we can make this a const. This is a function, and the function definition says we're going to take in message as a parameter, and then uh, what's inside of these is going to be the actual function. So first, I want to I want to check to see if message dot type. So this is the incoming message. If it if its type property equals message types dot, and then again I get this autocomplete here. So I got login down here. So if it equals login, then we want to generate a pretty simple HTML string. And really what that HTML string is, if I come down here far enough, where is it? This one. Uh, yeah, here we go. I'm going to copy this. So this is what represents one of those login messages. I'm going to say return. And then inside of backtick quotes, I'm going to uh, paste in that code, and uh, I can leave this on one line. I could, <clears throat> I could wrap this, and it might actually pick up with my uh, with my settings of VS Code to automatically wrap it. This is exactly what we want to uh, return in terms of the HTML string, except for one thing, and it's that we want to replace this piece right here with the actual author of this message. So with backticks, ES6 backticks, uh, we can type in the value of a variable here uh, by getting message dot author. All right, so this uh, dollar sign and then inside of brackets lets us and do string interpolation to put in uh, variable value names inside of this uh, inside of the string. So I think this is this is all we want to do for that type. So let's say uh, it's not a login message, it's one of the left or right messages, then we want to return and we'll just kind of stub out the same kind of thing here. All right. Oh, nope, that should be a semicolon. All right. So in here, now we want to return a different kind of HTML string. So let's grab one of these. Let's grab this one, for example. All right. And let's paste it in here. And I'm going to do a little bit of formatting to make sure that looks good. And I might take it in one more. There we go. All right, so this is the HTML string that we want to generate for uh, a left or a right message. So now we have to differentiate between the two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and put a little bit of, of uh, JavaScript in here, or string interpolation, and I'm going to say uh, message.type equals message types dot left. There we go. So if the type is left, and this is the ternary operator, so if it's left, then I want to do this string, message left. Otherwise, I want to do message right. And then this will get rid of this message right piece here. All right, let's make sure I did that right. So we've got, we've got a check to see what our message type is. If it equals left, then we want to use the string uh, message left or, or otherwise, oh, actually this is not an or, this should be a, a colon, which is why I'm getting that error. 
Um, otherwise, we want to display uh, or give it the class. Th this is inside of the class here. Give it the class of message right. All right, so then a couple of the other things that we need to update. Um, this is, let's see here, message author should, uh, we should put in here the message dot author. All right, pretty simple. And then the date, we should do the same thing there. So message dot date. And did we call it date or did we call it created at? Uh, let's see, date, okay, that's simpler. All right, and then the last thing is the actual message itself. So we'll come in and do message, message, uh, what do we call this, content, all right? So now this should generate the appropriate HTML for what we're looking for. Uh, the one last thing we can do here is we don't wanna display the author if it, equals message types dot write. So we'll do the ternary operator again, and uh, if it equals message write, we'll do nothing. Otherwise, we will, uh, we will go ahead and display the message author. Cool. All right, so we've got that laid out. So now we can, we can try to test this. So let's go ahead and save it. Well, actually, we've got one more piece. We need to not only take what we've uh, generated, so the, the HTML that's returned from this function, but then we need to have a, a function to uh, go ahead and display that at those actual messages. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do uh, create a new function called display messages, and it's gonna take no parameters, and this is, uh, again, an arrow function here, and we are going to basically iterate through our messages array, and for each, uh, message, we're going to generate HTML, the HTML for that message, and then we're going to put it in side of, let's see here, our messages list. So we're just going to add all of that stuff to the messages list. So what this is going to look like, and this might seem a little bit, uh, a little bit tricky to you guys, but hopefully it makes sense. So I want to say cons messages HTML equal, and I'm going to call messages, and now I'm going to call an ES6 function called map. And what this is going to do is it's going to take uh, the messages array, it's going to iterate through each item, it's going to give you a reference to each item inside of it, so each message, and then I'm going to return uh, create message HTML by passing in the message. All right, so what this is, what map does is it will take one array, it'll iterate through it, do some sort of conversion, and then return that new array, the new converted array. And uh, if we, just to be clear here, because this is, I'm sure this is new for some of you guys, this is an e ES6 arrow function as well. So this is what you would think of as a callback function uh, previously. It's gonna take in the message. So as you map through it, after you, as you map through messages, it's gonna get each message. And then this is an implicit return here. So if I don't actually declare the open, open and close brackets, whatever follows this is actually what's returned automatically. So this is going to return an array of HTML strings. And then the last thing here, and this, is, this might be a lot for you guys, we can take that array and we can call join on it, which will take all the items inside of that array and then put them all together in one string. So this is where we get our messages HTML string is because we do the conversion with map, we return from map an array, and then we call join on it to basically convert an array to a string. And then, We'll grab our messages list uh, DOM object and call enter HTML, and we'll just wipe out whatever was there and set uh, set it newly to the messages HTML that we just um, that we just created. So I'm going to save this. Let's come back to our. Actually, we can leave. Well, let's go ahead and delete all of this stuff. Let's wipe out all the stuff that we had inside of messages list. All right, and if we come back to our application. Right now we should see nothing, which is fine. What we need to do is actually add uh, just a, at least one piece of dummy data to our messages array. So I'm gonna open this up really quickly. And uh, let's say author is gonna be James Quick. Date is going to be 11-11-2018. And this is in the future, I'm just making up stuff here. Uh, content is gonna be cool message and type will be message types dot write. So this is the, uh, basically me saying it. Oh, no, there we go. All right, so in our messages array, we've got one object right now. 
uh, with author, date, content, and type. So we'll save that. And then next, we will come in and we'll make a call to our display messages. All right, go ahead and call that. And if I save it, hopefully, when we get back here, after it refreshes, oh, we don't see anything. So we need to take a look at, at what's going on there. All right, so I had to pause there to figure out what was going on. Uh, so I apologize for that. But uh, it's probably good that I go ahead and cover what was happening. And it was actually two things. So one, I'm trying to call display messages here uh, before it's actually being defined down here. So there's you can get into JavaScript hoisting, which I think will give me access to the, the name display messages, but it won't actually have its content associated with it if I try to call it. So I need to call it down here. And if I save this and come back to uh, Quick Chat, I'm also getting a an, um, message HTML is not defined. And I think I just had a small typo here. This is messages HTML, and this should be messages HTML as well. So let's save that and then pop over again. And now we should see this message pop up. So to continue to test this just a bit more, let's do uh, the same thing here with the content of left and then one more time for a login message and uh, with a real login message we won't have any content so we, we can really uh, get rid of that I think and save we don't actually need a date but we can leave it there let's just see if these two pop up correctly and that looks like exactly what we want so I think uh, like I said this is kind of one of the coolest things that I uh, that I do in these that I've done in these tutorials is uh, dynamically generating the HTML using the, the ES6 uh, backtick strings uh, for string interpolation. This is way easier than uh, I didn't I didn't mention this specifically, but if you did a multi-line string, you'd have to do something like this and like that, uh, and it gets just a little more complicated. Now you just open and close your backticks, you type in what you want, you can basically just copy and paste your HTML in here, and then go ahead and, and replace with string interpolation the variables that you want. And then the last thing here that is, is honestly super cool, and this is really the power of some of these ES6 functions, is we were able to generate uh, a, a, an HTML string to represent all of our messages with just really, let's see here, if I didn't have some auto formatting on here, this is basically one line of code to generate that HTML for each of those. Um, so again, what this is doing is it's taking the messages array, it's calling the map function, and the map function will iterate through each of the objects or the items inside of that array. It'll give you access to it, so here's message. And basically what this is, is this is a function, and I think it auto-formatted to take, take this away, but message is gonna be the parameter, and then because we don't define the open and close brackets, this is an implicit return. So this is what the function returns. This just gives you a super shorthand thing to, uh, to be able to return something, and if I wanted to, uh, what, let me show you what this would look like. If I wanted to actually return something, I would have to come in and uh, fit or manually call return and then uh, give the brackets as well. So it's just, it saves you a little bit of time, a little bit of space, and it makes for uh, just really easy readability, I guess, as you go through. So that's what it's doing. It's returning uh, the HTML string for each of these message objects. So by the end of this part, we've got an array of strings. And then we're basically converting that array of strings to a string by calling join here. And that's how we get the messages HTML. And then we more or less just wipe out whatever we had in the messages list and then put in the new messages HTML. So I think this stuff is super cool. Uh, I'm going a little bit longer again than I, than I uh, expected. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this video here and then we're going to add uh, the uh, send, let's see, send, if I can type, send button callback here and then the login button callback as well. So send button will actually send a message and add it to the array. Login button will log the user in, hide the login form, and then show the, uh, the messages stuff uh, going forward. So that's gonna do it for this video. We will come back uh, in the next one with uh, rounding out this uh, the functionality here in our JavaScript. Then we'll dive into uh, creating a node server and tying in the socket IO in the last couple of videos. Hope you guys are enjoying it. Uh, I will see you guys in the next video.